Under the LCFF funding system, revenue limits and most state categorical programs have been eliminated. The LCFF creates funding targets based on student characteristics and provides greater flexibility to use these funds to improve student outcomes. For school districts, the LCFF funding targets consist of grade span specific base grants plus supplemental and concentration grants that are calculated based on student demographic factors. In addition, we receive federal dollars that are restricted to program outcomes. This map provides local control funding formula, or LCFF, priorities. There are eight state priorities and whole child resources and supports designed to help local educational agencies, schools, and families serve the needs of the whole child. The LCAP is a three-year plan that describes the goals, actions, services, and expenditures to support positive student outcomes that address state and local priorities. The LCAP provides an opportunity for local educational agencies to share their stories of how, what, and why programs and services are selected to meet their local needs. For the 18-19 year, data which consists of a combination of enrollment, dashboard indicator, and demographic data elements were used to determine school needs. These categories include suspension rate, chronic absenteeism, ELA and math academic indicators, percent free or reduced lunch, percent of English learners, percent of students with disabilities, percent of homeless students, and percent of foster youth. This graphic demonstrates the differences between equality and equity. As we have discussed, the LCAP is designed to meet the needs of students in selected and targeted categories. When we look at this graphic, the goal of equality is to make sure that everyone has the same things to be successful. This graphic demonstrates that if we provide funding equally, despite student needs, there will be students who are not able to access high quality instruction, whereas the equity portion of the graphic demonstrates that equity is trying to understand where people are coming from and give them what they need to be successful. It is the goal of the Anaheim Elementary School District to use LCAP funding as designed to ensure that we provide the needed resources to address our students, identify barriers, and to ensure that our resources make sure that every student has access every day to high quality instruction. In AESD, when we look at the percentage of underserved students, we find that 91% of our students participate in the National School Lunch Program, that a high percentage of our students are also found to be English language learners, as well as foster youth. Seven times over the course of the year, AESD convenes a LCAP advisory committee that is made up of staff, parents, and community members. The purpose is to provide input and feedback on the actions and services that make up the programs that serve our students. In looking at our LCAP process, you will see that stakeholder engagement consists of teachers within AEEA, leadership represented by ASMA as well as the Orange County Department of Education, classified staff members represented by CSEA, and parents and community members who participate in our District Advisory Committee or DAC as well as our District English Learner Advisory Committee or DLAC. Following the engagement by these stakeholders 
in seven meetings. There is a draft review process conducted by the LCAP Advisory Committee as well as the DAC and DLAC. Based on this review process, the superintendent of AESD will respond in writing to comments received. Following that response, there is a public hearing on the LCAP, which will take place on June 12th at a Board of Education meeting, leading up to the review by the board and their approval during the June 26th meeting.